Hi guys, uh, today we're going to talk about approximation of functions, uh, Taylor polynomials, and derivatives. Uh, in fact, uh, we may break this into a couple of three lectures, uh, but today we're going to start off with, uh, with these three items. And let's start right off by saying that uh, we've got a function that we want to approximate. So let's say we have a function, f. It's a real function. Uh, now this could be, the domain could be a subset of R. Uh, let's say uh, an open set. Uh, S, a subset of R. Uh, the, fun, the actual functions we're going to look at, they'll be defined on all of R, but uh, we could just have them defined on a subset. And let's uh, just say, for example, we'll look at a couple of examples, but let's say, for example, that we have just the simple squaring function, f of x equals x squared. And now what we want to do is we want to find a function that we can use to approximate the values of this function. So let's write that down first, what, what it is we want to do, and then we'll come back and say a little more about this here. So what we want here, we want uh, a function, I'll call it P, uh, that approximates the function f. So let's come back over here and let's draw a, a picture of what we have with uh, our x squared function here. Uh, let's, uh, our axis here, across here. So the squaring function, I'm only going to be uh, working with uh, positive uh, numbers in the domain, so I'll, I really won't be worried about the, the stuff over on the left over here. So here's our, the graph of our function. And let's, uh, here's zero, and let's say that uh, I want to approximate the value of this function, let's say, uh, near 1. I'll call it x bar. So let's come back over here and say, uh, when I say I want to approximate this, I want to approximate near some x bar in the domain, near some specific point in the domain. And so here, let's, uh, let's note, first of all, that the value uh, of f is about here. And so let me use, uh, let me use this uh, color here. And uh, let's come across here like this. And let's drop down here like this. And so this is the value of f at x bar. Let's put this over here. This is f of x bar, which happens to be, of course, 1 also. And so several things now I think we can say. First, well, we want to approximate. We want to find how to approximate this one. Well, this is pretty simple. We don't really need to come up with some way to approximate x squared. We just uh, can calculate it very easily. I mean, suppose x, for example, is uh, 3 halves. Well, x squared is 9 fourths. So that's, that's pretty easy. So uh, I'm just using the example here as something that's pretty straightforward to work with, uh, but you know we don't really need to come up with some special method for approximating that function. But of course, all functions aren't going to be quite as simple as the squaring function. And let me just take a second example here. Let's take the function e to the x. So let's go down here and let's suppose that f of x is 
e to the x. Well, of course, that one's not so easy to, to uh, calculate. Uh, offhand, I don't know what e squared is. Uh, I don't know even what e is, maybe off. I can get a, a rough idea of what e is. Uh, square root of e? I don't know. So let's draw a picture of this one, too. So we have a picture that looks about like this. And let's say this is 1 here. And let's, uh, let's actually say 2, 3. Let's say, so this function, the graph of the e to the x function, looks about like this. So this is f of x equals e to the x. This is 1 again. This is 0. And let's suppose that I want to approximate the value of e to the x near, x, near 0. So let's call this x bar in this case. And I want to evaluate the function e to the x near 0, near x bar equals 0. Now 1, you can say, well, is that near 0 or not? Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see whether this is near enough to give us a good approximation, or maybe it's far enough away that approximation won't work. We'll check that out. But here, I just want to make the point that this is not so easy uh, to work with as this function here, not so easy to actually approximate. Uh, so we'll come back and we'll do this example in a little detail. So uh, what I want to do is I want to approximate the value of this near x bar equals, in this case, 1 in our example. So I want to see what happens if I move away from 1 by a little bit by the amount we'll call uh, that uh, delta x. So let's, suppo let's suppose that over here I have an x at which I want to evaluate this function, and I'm going to write that as x bar plus delta x. So delta x is the amount by which I'm moving away from the, um, by which I'm moving away from x bar, the kind of reference point. And so let's draw uh, a vertical line here as well. Okay, so of course this distance here is delta x, and let's go across here. This is f at x bar plus delta x. Let's notice, by the way, that we might also write here, of course, delta x is x minus x bar, and the way we write the same thing. Um, and this, then, of course, is the change that takes place in y. Uh, and I want to I estimate that change. Uh, I want to find some function that I can use that will tell me approximately what the value is at, the value of x squared is at x, at x pl bar plus delta x. Uh, again, it's not especially difficult in this case because it's a fairly simple function. So, in general, I want to find a function that will do this, and I've called it p for a reason that will become clear in just a little bit. Uh, but let's say uh, what I want is a simple function. In fact, I want something even simpler than x squared. So let's say what I want here is a simple function uh, that will do this. Uh, maybe I should write this down here, make sure I get it on the screen. Uh, and so, what do I mean by a simple function? Well, let's say a linear function. That's simple and simpler than the squaring function. So, I'm going to look for a linear function that will approximate f near x bar for relatively small changes delta x. And again, what do I mean by approximating? Well, I want something that will approximate f really well. I want, I want if in some sense, the best approximation that I can get. So let's also put in here I want a function that best approximates our function f near x bar. Well, if it's going to be a linear function, 
then uh, let's write down a typical linear function. Well, if it's a linear, if it's a pure linear function, then it has to be the case that the value of the function at zero is zero. And that is not going to be the case for any function that we would use to approximate this uh, near x bar equals one. Uh, so a linear function probably isn't quite going to work, but I want to retain that idea of a linear function here. But certainly, if we allow the function to be an affine function, then we have a shot at it. So let's write in here a typical affine function. And I'm going to write this as a1 times delta x. Now, delta x here, of course, is x minus x bar. So you can see that while I wrote delta x here and I have x as the argument, really x is the argument here because x bar is, is fixed. And so we could write it this way, but I find it useful to use a kind of a shorter version with a delta x here. And so coming back over the diagram, we might, uh, we might say that the best, well, linear in the sense that it's a straight line, the best affine function for approximating this function near x bar, we might guess that it's probably, uh, at least a good candidate, would be the function that whose graph is tangent to f here, that is the function whose slope is the derivative of f at this point, and then it's um, y-intercept over here is whatever it has to be to get it to go through this point with this slope. And so what we want to do now, I think the program here is going to be to say, first of all, let's actually write down an expression for this function, guessing that that is uh, going to be the best approximation that we can get to the function f near x bar here. And then we'll try to see if that's the case, verify it if we can, or disprove it and see if we can come up with something better. So that's kind of the program here. So let's come back over here and let's say, what do we need to have for our a naught and our a1? So let me write that in a different color here. Let's say, what uh, a naught and a1 should we use here? What numbers should a naught and a1 be if p is going to reflect this line or if p is going to be uh, a best approximation to f? Well, Let's, uh, it seems pretty clear that we're going to need to have p at x bar be equal to f at x bar. I mean, it's not going to do any good if we have the, our approximation uh, having a different value at x bar than the function itself has here. So the first thing to note is that surely it's got to be the case that our p at x bar is equal to f at x bar. And of course, notice, I should have a bar on it, notice that at x bar here, we have uh, x equals x bar, so delta x is zero. So here we're saying when delta x is zero, when we're at x bar, the, the, the function p should have the same value as f, and of course, when delta x is zero, this is zero, so p of x is equal to a naught. So this tells me that, that, that's a bar on there, this tells me that p of x bar should be a naught. So let's say that tells me that uh, f of x, uh, p of x bar should be a naught, so that means a naught should be f of x bar. 
So let me write that in. Put a little rectangle around that. In fact, let's even go a little further. f of x bar is actually a naught plus a1 delta x, but of course, delta x is zero, so that means that p at x bar should be a naught. So we've figured out what the best a naught is. Now let's look at the derivative of p at x bar. So the slope of this orange line over here, geometrically, and we want that to be also equal to the derivative of f at x bar. It should have the same slope as f, and so what is p prime at x bar? p prime at x bar is going to be, well, the a naught's constant, that drops out, so I have a1, or you can see that down here, the derivative of p at x, when delta x is zero, is going to be, uh, is going to be a1, well, in fact, the derivative is going to be a1 in general, so here we're going to have this is a1, so that tells me, so this gives me the answer to this question. It appears that what we want is to have uh, the a naught be equal to f at x bar, and we want to have a1 be the derivative of f at x bar, and that affine function, in fact, let's even write that down then, so this says that apparently we need to have p of x, not just p at x bar, p of x equal to a naught, that's f at x bar, plus a1 times delta x, that's a1 is f prime at x bar, so this is f prime at x bar, delta x. And again, here I've got x as the argument because that's what we usually do here. Here I've written delta x, but again, I'm always thinking that delta x is, of course, x minus x bar, and x bar is fixed. So this actually is a function of x. Okay? And so that is the, that is, whoop, that is the, the Taylor polynomial for f at or near x bar. And that's a definition. I'm not writing it down as a formal definition, but that is the definition of the Taylor polynomial for f at x bar is that it is this polynomial function, a first degree polynomial. In fact, let me even point that out. This is the first degree Taylor polynomial for f at x bar, which already suggests, of course, that maybe there's a second degree or a third degree or a higher degree Taylor polynomial for the function at x bar, as indeed there is, and we will see that shortly. But for now, the Taylor polynomial, first degree Taylor, it's a first degree polynomial in x or delta x, uh, meaning that it's linear, meaning there's a constant term and there is a, a linear term. In fact, a pure linear term. In fact, let's go over here and let's just note that, in fact, I could write this function here as a function of delta x, and I would write, I'm going to call it L of delta x, and it is a, a times delta x, where a is some, is some real number, and in fact, it's a1, it's the derivative, so I'll just put a1 in here, and I've got L for, it's a linear function, a pure linear function, when delta x is zero, this is zero, so it is a, a, a legitimate linear function, but it, this is also the graph of the affine function, 
P of X, which of course is A naught, A1 delta X, where, again, A naught and A1 are the value of the function in the function's derivative. And so, uh, now what I think we should do, uh, this was kind of intuitive. So what we said here is it seems as if, if we want to get a good approximation, now it's not intuitive that it's an affine function and that this part is linear, uh, that's clear enough, but it's kind of intuitive that this seems like it would be a good or the best approximation we could get for f, but we haven't really said what we mean by a good approximation. And so now, as our kind of next step in our program here, let's figure out if this is a good or if it's the best uh, linear or affine approximation to f near x bar. So let's take this off and uh, we'll see if we can do that. Okay, so now let's uh, see if we can determine whether uh, the Taylor polynomial, the first degree linear affine Taylor polynomial, uh, actually does give us a good approximation to f or not. So to do that, let's start by defining uh, what we could call the error of the approximation, how far off we are. So let's write r of delta x, and we'll see why r in a moment. Uh, and that is going to be the difference between f of x and uh, our approximation of f of x for any x. And again, uh, note that uh, here I've written delta x and here I have x, but again, remember this and this are x bar plus, whoops, yeah. Um, they're, I'm sorry, they are x bar plus delta x. Okay, okay, let's get that a little less messy. Okay, so, uh, so I do have in here, uh, I could have written this as r of x, or I could have written this as f and p of delta x, um, that we can translate back and forth. And so, uh, and in fact, let's even note that I could just as well have written this as f of x, equals uh, p of x plus r of delta x. So here uh, we can see why I called it the error of the approximation. This is the true value of f at some x away from x bar. And this is our approximation, so this is how far we're off. And it's called, I use the letter capital R because that's the standard notation for this, because in this way of writing it, the R is the remainder. So we have the uh, Taylor polynomial plus some remainder that gives us f of x. So let's even say this is the error or the remainder for f and x bar. And so I want to see what happens to that error as delta x gets very small as we get close, as we get nearer and nearer x bar. So let's look at the limit. Let's look at the limit as delta x goes to zero of r of delta x, and that is going to be the limit as delta x goes to zero of uh, f of x, but let me write that now as f of x plus delta x, x bar plus delta x, sorry. And this is minus, and now I'm going to write this in the form a naught a1 delta x that we had to begin with because we're trying to figure out whether the a naught and the a1 really ought to be f of x bar and f prime of x bar, or perhaps something else. So let me leave those as kind of a generic a naught and a1 here. But now notice that the limit as delta x goes to zero here. Well, uh, 
as delta x goes to zero, this disappears, so that's gone. And as delta x goes to zero, this goes to f of x bar, which is a fixed number. x bar is fixed, so this limit is f of x bar minus a naught. And of course, that is equal to zero if and only if a naught is f of x bar. So on the one hand, that kind of tells me again, in much the same way as when we first figured out that a naught should be f of x bar, this kind of tells me that my, I really want to have a naught, the constant term in the uh, polynomial, I want that to be f of x bar if this is going to be a good approximation. I don't want it to be, I don't want the, the approximation to have a different value here at x bar than f of x bar. Uh, but of course, this is true no matter what a1 is. a1 has nothing to do with this, right? So this doesn't tell me anything about whether a1 should be the derivative or something else. I can't tell. So having this remainder term be zero at x bar, or more to the point, having it be very small when we're near x bar so that the limit of this as delta x goes to zero is zero, that's fine for telling me this, but it doesn't tell me anything about what a1 should be. So that isn't really a very good criterion for whether this is a good approximating function here. So let's take, uh, let's define the relative error uh, at delta x. I'm going to define that as 1 over delta x times r of delta x. Let's see what happens to that as delta x goes to 0. And I would like it to be the case that even this goes to 0 as delta x goes to 0, this relative error. So let's see what happens to the limit here. So we have the limit as delta x goes to zero of, uh, well, I'll write r of delta x again here. That's the limit as delta x goes to zero of one over delta x. Again, same thing in here. f of x bar plus delta x. But now I know that a naught is f of x bar. So let's write in here f of x bar minus uh, a1 delta x. So what is this limit? Well, now I have the 1 over delta x times this is just a1, a number. It doesn't depend on delta x. Delta x in the denominator, delta x in the numerator. So this limit is the same as the limit as delta x goes to zero, one over delta x, f of x bar plus delta x minus f of x bar minus my, it's supposed to be a minus, it's kind of slanted, minus a1. So that's this limit. And of course, you uh, I've already noticed, I'm sure, <laughs> that this is just the derivative of f at x bar. And so if I want this limit to be 0, then that's the same as saying this minus the number a1 is 0. Uh, so I could write in here equals 0. but that, of course, is the same as simply saying that this is equal to a1. So that tells me that, uh, and I should say that this is equal to a1. Uh, so the limit of this is 0 if and only if a1 is equal to the derivative. So that tells me that if I want to have a best approximation to f, and if I define best approximation as one in which the, the limit 
uh, of the relative error is, or let's just say, one in which the, the relative error becomes zero. The limit of that relative error is zero as delta x gets small, as delta x gets near zero, then it, I've got to have a1 uh, be equal to f prime at x bar. So this gives us more than just some intuition about the fact that, well, it looks as if this affine approximating function should be this one. Uh, it actually tells us a motivation, a rationale, a reason why we would have uh, a naught be this number here and a1 be this number here if we want this to be a best approximation. And in fact, let me even say as well that this is one of a number of uh, reasons why we define the derivative of a function to be this limit here. We could have, we could have started out by saying uh, that we want this, we want this a1 to be uh, a, a number such that this relative error goes to zero as delta x gets small. And when we do that, we would say, ah, that means a1 has to be this complicated limit thing down here. And we want it to be the slope of this. So we would say, ah, well, let's define this thing to be the derivative. So that's one of the ways we could actually derive a, a kind of a, a reason for having this limit actually be the derivative of a function. So that gives us a pretty good idea of Taylor polynomial, first degree Taylor polynomial, affine uh, or linear in this term here, and that in fact that does seem to be the best affine approximation to our function f. So now let's go a little further and say, could we make that approximation better if we were to, let's say, take a second degree polynomial, a quadratic function as our polynomial? And of course, for this function here, <laughs> the best quadratic or second degree polynomial to approximate it is the function itself. It's a perfect approximation. So in that regard, once we go to a second degree polynomial, this is not maybe the ideal example, although in one way it's a good example because we will see that using the second derivative of this as the second derivative for our Taylor polynomial will give us an exact approximation. But when we get down here, things are not going to be quite so obvious and seemingly trivial. And so what I want to do now is to say, could we find a second degree polynomial that would, we could use to approximate this function, which is certainly not itself a second degree polynomial, and we could use to approximate any sufficiently smooth differentiable function. So that's what we'll do. So we'll take this off and that's what we'll do next.